So a few days ago, I put up a little poll on my community section. It was a little kind of a quiz in the form of a poll. And it looks like um, reason is prevailing in my poll because the correct answer to that poll, in my opinion, is um, the second choice here. And it looks like 68% of the people have chosen um, this answer. And so I am quite happy about this because uh, it gives me a little bit more faith in uh, humanity in the sense of um, reason prevailing. Of course, reason and logic are very important. They're very important to me. And uh, for the record, the image on, the image om is, is something I invented in, the, uh, in this thought experiment, in this quiz. And of course, the image om cannot be a fundamental particle or a fundamental unit of uh, images. And so this was kind of a joke answer, but uh, you know, maybe someone um, picked this for a joke as well. I don't know, but the right answer and neither might have been a good answer if this was wrong. But in my mind, the correct answer is the total memory of one second's worth of frames. So I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, talk about this in more detail. I'm going to describe the problem domain that I was trying to describe in um, in my quiz on the community section uh, with pictures. It's a lot easier to understand the problem domain when you see the pictures. So as you may or may not know by now, uh, I work in the field of medical imaging and 3D ultrasound is my area of expertise. I started working in this field in 1993. I started developing 3D ultrasound applications in 1993. And so I've been basically doing this for, ex um, as of July this year, I will have been doing this for exactly um, 30 years. So I'm pretty sure if I didn't know what I was talking about, I would have been fired by now. Um, some of the applications I develop are for um, surgical procedures. So uh, the software, the devices that I've written software for have been deployed to the operating room and have been used in the operating room. And I personally um, spent much time in the operating uh, room uh, running and babysitting my devices to make sure that they work exactly as specified. So here is the problem domain. It's actually quite simple. Um, I have an ultrasound machine that I attach um, to my computer and the ultrasound machine spits out um, ultrasound images and those ultrasound images uh, get captured by my computer and they get stored into memory. So this is a uh, depiction of the ultrasound transducer. The ultrasound transducer is hooked up to the ultrasound machine and it uh, scans. So the ultrasound machine, uh, you can imagine that this is a um, section of the human body and the ultrasound machine makes contact couples with the skin of the human body and can look down into um, this region right here. The ultrasound probe, the ultrasound transducer is hooked up to the ultrasound machine. So the images get generated um, through the ultrasound machine. The ultrasound machine converts them to video images, which come out of a video port and the, uh, my computer is connected to the ultrasound machine. I have a frame grabber that grabs the frames from um, this connection. And uh, the, my software takes the images from the frame grabber and stores them into the computer memory. So the ultrasound machine is generating and spitting out uh, 30 frames per second and the frame grabber in the ultrasound machine is capturing 30 frames per second and storing them into um, memory. The images themselves uh, are 640 by 480. Now that's 640 by 480 pixels. Um, and that is the number of bytes 
per frame. Now, to be clear, because someone uh, made a comment on my community section about uh, frames being compressed and that sort of thing. And so the images from uh, ultrasound machines, I don't know if you ever noticed this, but they're basically black and white. And so the images that I'm getting from the ultrasound machine are uh, grayscale images and there's um, eight uh, bits per one byte per one pixel. So one pixel is one byte. And so um, the, each image is 640 by 480 and um, that's the number of bytes per frame. And of course, one byte is, you can think of one byte as one uh, unit of memory. So each memory cell can hold uh, eight bits or one byte, and that corresponds to one pixel. And there's another one more piece of information that we need to know in order to uh, generate a 3D ultrasound scan. And so in order for me to generate a 3D ultrasound scan, I have to translate this probe um, across the surface of the um, region that I'm studying. This could be a phantom, this could be a human being. So I need to translate using a motor translate this transducer across this surface here and collect images while I'm moving the transducer. And so um, this process uh, takes, uh, for this particular scan that I'm, I'm um, you know, mimicking here, let's say it takes 10 seconds. So most of the 3D scans I do are actually around 10 seconds. So it takes 10 seconds for me to translate using a mover, translate across this surface. And in the meantime, I'm capturing images and storing them in memory. And this takes, you know, approximately 10 seconds. So before I start the scan, what happens is um, I say I click the scan button, but before I start the scan, I um, use all this information to calculate how much memory I'm going to need to store all the frames as they're coming in. So generally I click a scan button, I look, um, I look at uh, how many frames uh, per second I'm capturing and how big each frame is and how long I expect the scan to take and I allocate the right amount of memory to hold all the images uh, well and so I have enough uh, memory to store all the images uh, during the 3D ultrasound scan. So now I have all the information I need to solve the problem. And so here is the problem, here's the um, question that I'm trying to answer is how much memory do I need to allocate in order to do one complete 3D ultrasound scan? Okay, I have all the information. So the each image is 640 by 480 bytes per frame. Uh, the frames are coming in at 30 frames per second. And the scan time, the time for the complete scan, is 10 seconds. So I'm going to write a little uh, formula here to help me solve the problem. So what I want to do is I want to uh, you know, find out how much memory do I need to allocate in order to do one 3D ultrasound scan. So I write this equation here. And this equation, it reads, so the total memory, M is the total memory that I'm going to allocate, is equal to um, H times F. And H is the um, constant of memory. So H is the, um, the memory I need for one frame. And this is a constant. This doesn't change. This is the, you can call it the uh, constant of proportionality. This is the proportion of um, memory I need for one frame, okay? And uh, the units are bytes per frame. So H is equal to uh, this value here. Uh, the frequency, of course, as I told you, is 30 frames per second. So 30 frames per second. And um, so that's all I have right now. And so um, the question is, do I have enough information in this equation to tell me how much memory I need to allocate in order to do one 3D ultrasound scan. So first we will look at the units for H. Okay, the units for H are bytes per frame. So I'm gonna write bytes per frame here. And the unit of frequency is frames per second. 
okay? And so uh, these are the units of this equation. And um, of course, you can see that the, um, the frames cancel. And the final units of this equation are bytes per second. So in my community section quiz, I jokingly referred to this, the memory of this equation as an image on, okay? The, the memory that I need to, so the memory that is associated with H times F, I was calling an image on. And of course, uh, this is a joke, but you, you know, as a joke, you could think of it as a, a, a memory packet. It is a packet of memory that contains information, um, uh, ultrasound frame information. And again, I want to remind you that this is a joke. This is, um, a, you know, but I'm trying to make an analogy with, you know what, but I'm not going to get there yet. I just want to uh, make sure that you know that I'm joking when I say image on, image on. So hopefully you can see by now that uh, I do not, this formula does not give me enough information to calculate the memory that I need to allocate in order to do uh, my 3D ultrasound scan because my 3D ultrasound scan uh, takes 10 seconds. Okay, it doesn't take one second, it takes 10 seconds. And so in order for me to calculate how much memory I need for my 10 second scan, I need to add a, a time a variable to my equation. And this is the time for my 3D ultrasound scan. This is the time it takes um, for me to translate this uh, transducer using a motor across the uh, space that I'm trying to scan. So I put the uh, scan time in my formula and now I can calculate how much memory I need to allocate in order to do one 3D ultrasound scan. So let's look at the, the uh, units for this formula here. So um, the units for H times F are bytes per second. Okay, let's go back to that. H has units bytes per frame, F has units frames per second, and this works out to be um, bytes per second. So H times F have units bytes per second, and the time, measure time, the time for one uh, 3D ultrasound scan, one complete 3D ultrasound scan, has units of uh, of the second. And so T uh, time is in uh, on a per second basis. So this is the amount of time. The um, So I plug in 10 into this T variable because my 3D ultrasound scan takes 10 seconds. And here you can clearly see that the per second cancels the second and um, we end up with the units of bytes which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to know how many bytes, how much memory in bytes I need to allocate in order to do my um, 3D ultrasound scan. So problem solved. I now have enough information in my formula. I now have the right variables in order for me to calculate the amount of memory uh, I need in order to do my 3D ultrasound scan. So based on what I showed you here, it is my opinion that this is the same problem. Okay, I'm going to say that again. This is the same problem. All you have to do is replace the word um, frame with the word wave front. So if you can imagine each wave front in this wave is one frame in my ultrasound, um, 3D ultrasound um, image uh, example, then, or analogy, then these become the same problem. So I want you to imagine that light is a wave propagating in a media. 
Okay, first of all, I want to make it clear that this is just the schematic of a wave. Okay, this is uh, how I depict waves. And so um, you can imagine that the wave is propagating in this direction. Okay, it's propagating in this direction. And I also want you to imagine that this uh, is a one second time interval. So the time it takes from this wave front to reach this detector is one second. Okay, and so this, I want you to imagine that this is the detector over here, and so the waves are propagating in this direction, and they are uh, interacting with bumping into, crashing into this detector, and that each wave front, each frame, each wave front, okay, is um, exactly the same amount of energy. Okay, so each wave front, so I am going to depict amplitude has the same energy. Each wave amplitude carries the same energy. And um, in this case, uh, if this is a one second time interval, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six, six wave frames, six frames per second, six wave fronts entering the detector over a one second time interval. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, double the frame rate. I'm going to double the number, uh, the frequency. I'm going to double the number of wave fronts that hit the detector in the one second time interval. Okay, so obviously, obviously you can see that over a one second time interval that uh, more wave fronts are going to hit the detector in uh, unit time, in the one second time interval. So in this case, I've only got six wave fronts per second hitting the detector. In this case, I have um, 12 wave fronts hitting, entering the detector in a one second time interval. So um, clearly you can see that a lower, lower frequency of light is going to equate to a smaller amount of energy over a one second time interval than a, um, a higher frequency uh, signal. So in the higher frequency signal, you've got more wave fronts entering the detector in a one second time interval and um, in a lower frequency signal, you've got less wave fronts entering the detector in a one second time interval. So this, in my mind, is the same problem as the 3D ultrasound problem, only instead of uh, frames coming in at 30 frames per second, um, let's call them image units, so image units coming in at 30 frames per second instead instead of frames coming in at 30 frames per second um, we have um, wave fronts uh, coming in to the detector uh, let's imagine this is my ultrasound machine collecting um, wave fronts so we have uh, here we have 12 hertz we have 12 frames coming in in a one second time interval and so I see these two problems as, um, as identical, analogous. They um, correspond to each other. And so um, if you look at this problem from, from the perspective of my analogy, uh, and if you refer to um, these as frames instead of wave fronts, then you can see that the analogy is uh, is very good. The analogy is uh, is a good way of looking at this problem. So if you do a quick Google search, you're gonna find you that you see this question quite a bit. Okay, why do short wavelengths have more energy than long wavelengths? Why do shorter wavelengths have more energy than longer wavelengths? Why do EM waves with shorter wavelengths have more energy than those with longer wavelengths? Okay, so when you ask the question this way, um, the implication is, so why do shorter wavelengths have more energy than longer wavelengths? The impression that you give someone, the implication is that, that this 
has less energy than this. Or should I say this has more energy than this. So shorter wavelengths have more energy than the longer wavelengths. But in my analogy, um, I use amplitude uh, just in my schematic, I use amplitude as energy, and so you can see in in my analogy, in my um, depiction here, that the um, lower frequency wave, uh, each wave has the same amplitude, and the higher frequency wave has the same amplitude as the lower frequency wave. Okay, so... Um, this is a problem. It's a problem. It's a conceptual problem because when you word the question like this, why do shorter wavelengths have more energy than longer wavelengths? You give the impression that this has less energy than this, or this has more energy than this. And so that is equivalent to saying in my 3D ultrasound analogy, it is equivalent to saying that when um, my frame rate changes, so let's say my frame rate changes to 15 frames per second, and so the time between the frames is a little bit longer, that is equivalent to saying that my image, when I'm running at 15 hertz instead of uh, 30 hertz, where there is more space, between the frames. So um, when the wavelength goes up, the time period also goes up. So when the time period between frames is longer and the virtual wavelength is longer, that's equivalent to saying that the memory that I need to allocate for a, um, a longer wavelength, so a longer time period between frames, that is equivalent to saying that uh, the image is less, that I need to allocate less memory for each frame when uh, the frame rate goes down, when the, when the wavelength, when the period between the frames gets bigger and the virtual wavelength between frames gets bigger, that I need to allocate less memory per frame. Now, obviously, using this analogy, um, the size of the frame does not change. The frames are still 640 by 480, even if the frames were only coming in at 15 frames per second. Now, alternatively, the frames could be coming in at 60 frames per second, and I would have to capture more frames, or I would be able to capture more frames in a one-second time interval. And so my 3D ultrasound image, in this case, if I went up to 60 frames per second, the 3D ultrasound image would have more frames in the whole image. It would the, the density of the image, the resolution of the image would be much higher. So if I could capture 60 frames a second in my 10 second scan, I'd have twice as many images in here and my image quality would be much better. Okay, so and that's, you know, that is actually desirable. We want either a higher image quality or we could alternatively run a faster scan with the same image quality. But I digress. The, the main point I want to make here is that um, the energy for each wave front can be the same. Okay, so um, the energy of each wave front um, doesn't um, have less energy. Each wave front carries the same energy because it's the amplitude of this wave front that gives the energy and the amplitude is the same whether the frequency is 6 hertz or 12 hertz. Okay, so um, this wave front carries the same energy as this wave front. Okay, this wave front carries the same energy. It doesn't have less energy. It carries the same energy as this wave front, only in, um, in this uh, signal here, in this wave here, more in one second time interval, or if it was it, this could be a 10 second time interval. So in the 10 seconds of my 3D ultrasound scan, I'm getting more w less wave fronts with this uh, frequency here than I am with this frequency here. The size of the frame, okay, the energy of each um, wave front, um, or by my analogy, the size of the frame does not change, 
uh, what changes is the number of frames that are coming in on a per second basis on a, in, I mean, in my unit time interval or in the time interval of my experiment. So asking this question is, it has an inherent flaw because it gives the false impression that one wave front, one wave front carries, um, so of a longer wavelength, carries less energy all by itself, carries less energy than a shorter wavelength um, with a wave front. Okay, so this gives a false impression. Asking the question this way gives the false impression that this is true. So a better question to be asking, in my opinion, is why does higher frequency light have more energy than lower frequency light? This question is much easier to answer. Higher frequency light has more wave fronts, more frames, hitting the detector in a, uh, in a one second time interval or in unit time, whatever that happens to be. A lower frequency light, lower frequency light has less wave fronts hitting the detector in uh, the same amount of time. And so, um, so that is what this equation represents. Okay, this equation represents the number of uh, wave fronts, the energy of the number of wave fronts hitting a detector in a one second time interval. And the only reason this is a one second time interval is because uh, we are not writing in the measure time, the time for the scan, the time for the experiment. We are not writing the time variable into the equation uh, like we forgot to do um, back here. And then we had to invent uh, an imaginary fundamental particle uh, called the image arm. Okay, and so, um, so a better question to be asking if you want to know um, about light energy is ask this question, why does higher frequency light have more energy than lower frequency light? Okay, this question is much easier to answer because higher frequency light sends more energy units, okay, more energy units to, this is the energy unit, this is a quantum of energy in, in, my, um, in my model, okay, it sends more energy units to the detector in unit time. Um, there are other ways of looking at this problem, but this is the way that makes more sense to me. Uh, because of my background in three-dimensional imaging, I was able to work through the problem with something that I'm familiar with, and I was able to come up with a solution um, that actually makes sense um, to me. So hopefully this makes sense to you. I'm pretty sure this is going to make sense to 68% um, of the people that watch my YouTube channel. I'm really happy to see that. Thank you for taking the time to do this um, little experiment with me. Um, it really, uh, getting this result here, uh, gives me a little more, more faith in, in humankind that maybe uh, we are more sensible than, um, than I am um, giving the human race credit for. And so, um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Thanks a lot for spending the time to watch my videos. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments and the questions. I don't appreciate when uh, people kind of insult my intelligence. You know, I don't appreciate that. You know that. It's not cool. But you know what? I'm not a perfect person either. I have Mars in Scorpio, and I've um, been known to lash out at people when um, they behave badly towards me. And so... Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I'm again, I appreciate uh, the time and effort that you guys put into watching my videos and making comments and asking questions. And um, so I'm going to leave it at that. And hopefully you had a good weekend and I will be back.